Hi guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodah. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here again with my glue book folio and been having a lot of fun so far with this um, folio. So now really the folio is kind of coming together nicely. I've just got to do kind of the front cover and the back cover. Um, haven't quite decided how I'm going to do those yet. So what I thought we could do is just come along and make some bits and pieces to put into our folio. Now I've got a whole bunch of book pages here beside me, which I used recently um, in another video. So I thought let's try and use up some of these book pages and let's try and make um, a little journal from these, which will just tuck in quite neatly to our, um, you know, folio. So I'm just going to take a bunch of these papers. I think I grabbed five there. Yep. I've just grabbed five so I'm just going to move that to one side and I'm just going to be you know really kind of um what's the word well just very basic in my methods <clears throat> so just folding it over there literally creating my basis for my little journal and then I'm just going to stitch this on the sewing machine so that I've made my sort of spine there. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I'm back with my, you know, very rough and ready kind of journal there, just made from some book pages. I'm just going to cut the threads a little bit so they're not sort of overhanging too long. Now, as you can see, I mean, this has got the torn edges and everything from where I've torn it out. I rather like that, so I'm going to just leave that. But I mean, of course, if you don't like that look, then, you know, trim yours down first. Now, I'm wondering whether to actually paint this ivory. I mean, I know that I've done this a billion times, but as I always say, if, if you find something that works and, you know, you like that method, then just stick with it because, you know, why wouldn't you? Um, or I could use some gesso over this. So I might just try some gesso, I think. Um, yeah, let's try that. So I've got a paintbrush here. It's a little bit stiff. I need to... Uh, Soak it in some conditioner, I think. Okay, and I've got my gesso down here just beside me. So I'm just going to go oops, over all of the pages pretty much to give them a coat, you know, because basically I just want to get rid of the text as much as possible. I don't mind it showing through, however, a little bit, if you see what I mean. So for me, this looks like quite a nice coverage because it's covered but still visible, which I think looks rather nice. Hold on a second. Sorry about that. The phone hardly ever rings and of course it's going to ring when you're doing a video, isn't it? So I'm just going to go through the whole of the little journal doing the same on all the pages with text. So what I'm going to do is just very roughly go over like that anywhere where there's text. As I say, I'm not trying to get rid of it completely. I'm just dulling it down so that it can be journaled over. And I'll just do the whole of it and then I will dry it with my heat tool so that we can just crack on. So I'll stop now and get on with that. Okay, I am back. So I'm covered in gesso now. I have tried to clean my hands a little bit, but yeah, they're still still quite covered. So this is not quite dry, I have to say, because I'm quite impatient, so I couldn't quite be bothered to wait. But as you can see, it's covered now enough that you would be able to journal over these pages. The text is, you know, a sort of um, dim pattern in the background, but you could easily journal over those and that text is not quite so intrusive. So... It's just a little way of using up some extra book pages. I'll just kind of hold that out because obviously the gesso is not really dry in there. Um, but yeah, it's just a little extra way of using up some book pages and just sort of creates a nice, oops, obviously wetter than I thought, um, a nice little, um, you know, pull out piece really for your journals. So now what we can do is obviously just get decorating it. We want to tie it in obviously with our folio that we've got here. So I don't want to necessarily put things on every single page because of course this is your journaling space um, or it's going to be one of your journaling spaces. As you can see, my heat tool, I obviously had it too close to the gesso and it's kind of bubbled up here. 
So I will try and cover up sort of anything like that. But I mean, on the whole, I want to leave, um, you know, some journaling space on here as well as, you know, make it look something pleasing to the eye as well. So I'm just going to obviously pull in some of the similar things that we have been using for the folio so that it, you know, ties together really nicely. So I'll just cut out this one. I don't know why, but for some reason, I know I said this before, everything that I've done in the glue book, for some reason, well, the glue book folio, you know, I've cut out rather than torn, torn down, which I normally do for junk journals. I don't know why that is, but for some reason for me, yeah, for some reason I can't seem to get my head around having torn pieces in there. Don't ask me why, I have no idea why that would be. So again, I'm just going to go through my little um, book of nursery rhymes and see what little images that I might be able to actually incorporate here on the front. You know, if I were to have this as my cover. And I'm just wondering whether I actually would prefer to have a wraparound cover around this and this just be the inside pages because it's quite curly since obviously being, you know, gessoed and dried it's gone a little bit curly and actually it would make it more of a feature, I guess, if I actually had a cover. So yeah, maybe that's kind of something that I would prefer to do. So again, let me just pull in some of the green page that I have used for the, you know, the other parts in the journal. So hold on, I'm just, just rummaging through my bag to try and get some of the green food colored paper. So hold on, I might have to go and get a sheet. Okay, so I've bought in some of the green paper. Now, unfortunately, I thought I had some more of this on the thicker card, but I couldn't seem to find any. So at the moment, I've just got it on the, you know, this thinner paper. So, I mean, that's fine. Um, I would have preferred it, you know, thicker, but it, it doesn't really matter. So let's have a look, just working out what type of cover I'm going to be able to do, or whether I should actually try and cover this paper so as it's thicker. Um, hmm. let me just have a look again. So I'm just pulling in maybe some sheet music. I don't know if that will cover the whole, it doesn't quite, well it just literally just reaches around those book pages. So it's a pretty tight fit. Um, so actually the logical thing would be pull in the book page that I just used. So let me move the folio out the way a bit because otherwise I'm going to end up getting getting that covered in gesso and what have you. And then I'm going to turn this over because obviously this turned out very patchy when I coloured it. So what I'm going to do, I think, is glue this down completely onto the sheet of paper. Yeah, I think that's probably the best thing to do. So let me just get my glue. Just making sure it's giving it a shake. Hopefully it's going to be cooperating today. Let's have a look. Okay, so I'm just going to go around the whole edge of the book page. Like that. Oops. Can't really see again. Okay another shake so right around there and then all through this middle section I mean obviously you know this is just a tiny journal it's not a great big you know work of art or anything like that so you know the fact that this is going to be pretty rusticy um, <laughs> in its style and this is not going to obviously be a super robust you know, heavy kind of cover, that's fine. Cause this is just really, you know, we're just making some things to pull out of our folio. So just going to stick that down here. And if I just go to the edges, that will be two less edges that I'm going to need to cut like that. Now, what did occur to me when I was doing the gesso is actually, to be honest, it probably would have been much quicker to have gessoed the book pages before um, stitching them into, you know, to my journal. So I think, 
I'm going to do that here. So I'm going to just spread this out and then what I'm going to do, I'll cut it down. And again here, just to sort of match up with that torn edge, I think I'm going to just tear that down. So I'll just fold that down along the crease there. Okey Like that, and we'll just tear that down. So I've got that nice rough edge everywhere. And then, oh, I might as well. Oops. Go down there, and then I'm just going to cut it here. And then, yeah, before making this into a sort of cover as such, I'm going to actually gesso over the book page. So I'll do that now. Oops, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, we went mad with the gesso then, didn't I? Oh, right, let me get my brush back in. I'll just spread that all over. And this will just, again, you know, help with that continuity because then the cover's going to be tied in to the appearance of the book pages in the journal itself. So, like that. And obviously we've covered up the text now, so that's another surface for, for journaling on. So again, I'm going to just quickly dry this off with my heat tool. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so now I've got my cover. I mean, unfortunately it has bubbled quite a lot, um, you know, on the other side. That's obviously where the glue was and then wasn't, if you see what I mean. So it has bubbled during the heat process, but I'm hoping that they will kind of go down um, as time goes by and if they don't it's not really the end of the world because probably they will be covered up when I'm decorating the you know the cover so I'm just going to fold this in half now I mean hopefully it's dry enough so this is going to form my cover for my journal now I just need to decide do I want the torn edges on the top or the bottom I think I probably want them on the bottom yeah I think I probably want them on the bottom. So, I mean, as you can see, my pages are overhanging here. So what I'm going to have to do is obviously trim them down, which I'll do um, in a little while. But what I want to do now is, you know, the fun part, obviously, is just to decorate up, you know, this, what's going to be the cover. So again, I'll pull this back in that we cut out, you know, that we were going to have on the outside originally. So we could have that there. And I've also got... I've got that um, sheet music, the blue sheet music that, again, I kind of pulled in the other day. I mean, I quite like this. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to cut this out on the curve. I will try. I might not make a very good job of it. Or it might just look rubbish. Sometimes I find that these kind of curved pieces, I think, oh, I'll try and make that curved on, you know, on my piece. And actually, although they looked fantastic, you know as they were when I try and cut them curved they just look rubbish that piece actually doesn't look too bad so I'm thinking I could have that as the full length I mean I could even have it maybe on the edge which would also provide a little bit more kind of robust sort of stability to the the edge of the cover now just want to kind of think Am I going to have this in here as well? If I am, how's it going to go? Is it going to go like that? Right, let's just move the folio right out the way. Move the gesso out the way. Okay, now I tore out a few of those nursery rhyme pages the other day as well, didn't I? So let's see what pages I actually tore out. Oh, where have they gone? They've obviously slid under something now. Right, okay, let me just, oops, let me just pull in the, the book again because I don't want to waste everyone's time while I'm looking for the pages that I tore out because we can always just tear out some more. Uh, I mean, actually, this one's kind of fun. <laughs> I mean, we could have him, like, dangling down. What do you think? I'm just wondering, like, if I try to cut him out... Obviously, I have the problem here with his hand. Now, let's just have a look. 
because an alternative would be hmm, wondering if I could kind of tuck this in here like that and have him overhanging this advert now this may be way beyond my capabilities I might be kind of getting way ahead of myself here and way too ambitious but let's give this a try I know you can probably cut straight onto this mat um it seems an incredible mat but I haven't dared take a craft knife to this mat yet so I still don't dare do that I'm not going to just in case I do damage it you know beyond beyond repair right so I'm going to cut from his arm along those banisters so like oops like this oh my gosh I hope this is going to work Oh, I do hate using the craft knife. I must say, I'm absolutely rubbish with a craft knife. I mean, I see lots of people, they're so brilliant with their cutting skills. I am so rubbish. I mean, it doesn't help because I've got like the world's cheapest craft, craft knife, but I don't think I'd be any better with a decent one, to be fair. So I'm thinking kind of have that like that. So obviously, to get the chap showing, I'm going to have to cut round him. So... Oh, this is where it's going to get really fiddly. So, yeah, I'm going to cut... Oh, my gosh, how am I going to do this? I'm going to cut him here around his head. Oh, my glasses are on my head. Let me just pull them in because perhaps perhaps I need them. Otherwise, I'm going to just cut his... Um, <laughs> I don't know, something off. I think this is his hair, kind of like... It looks like rabbit ears, but it is, in fact, his hair, where it's kind of like you know, dangled down. Oh my gosh. And then round here. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. Right, because that's so close to that other piece, it's now wanting to kind of tear the paper. So let's just try it like that. See whether I've got enough like that. And I probably want to get his hand as well. So okay so his head will be dangling over the advert yeah i mean actually in hindsight i maybe didn't need to cut that i don't know let's have a look see right okay so i did i it's quite confusing here because it's going to be tucked under and over it's confusing to see where the cuts needed to be right for a minute, I thought, oh, perhaps I didn't need to have cut that bit, but I did. So, yeah, he's going to be like that. Now, do I want his other hand hanging over the adder? Probably do. I'm just probably <laughs> not wanting to do the cutting. Okay. Oh, gosh, he's got fingers and everything. Well, yeah, I think I'm going to make a hash of doing that. But let's let's give it a go. Let's just mutilate his hand completely. So, oh, my gosh, he's going to have no fingers left, honestly my goodness oh i need to invest in some new craft knives these are just um these were a pack from like our shop here that we get called poundland like you know obviously everything's a pound in there and yeah i've had them for a long time i think this is my only one that i have left i think it was a pack of like six or something um and it's super old so it's pretty blunt and the blade keeps sliding in so um yeah, definitely need to go to Poundland and buy some more craft knives. Oops. Or I should probably just be a bit more professional and not go to Poundland and buy some decent ones. Okay, so, I mean, he has got something resembling fingers still left on his hand, would you believe? Yeah, I mean, that was kind of touch and go there for a while. But I love how that looks because then we've got the kind of, um, you know, the two different pieces of the books which looks really cool. Now, how are we going to have that on the cover here? So let's just bring this back. Obviously at the moment, this is too big for the cover. So what we could do is we could cut it round and have it, you know, the stairs shaped around like that. That might be quite nice rather than having the entire picture. So I think I'm going to do that. What I might do is glue my advert in place so then that's you know that's then not going to keep moving around because otherwise I'm likely to actually snip into that next and I won't end up having it on there at all right so get it 
in place. Luckily, this glue is quite, you know, quite movable, um, which is great because sometimes you do need to move your piece, don't you? So, again, just poking that sort of like that, pull it out of it. Right, now get his little hand. Oh my gosh, this is way beyond fiddly. Still got my glasses on. Yep, still got them on. So, oh my gosh, now I'm using my wet wet wipe instead of my dried wipe. Oh, where's my dry one gone? Oh, this is um, rapidly turning into a disaster zone, isn't it? I think I've actually thrown my dry one away by mistake. I obviously meant to throw the wet one away. Right, okay. So then what I need to do, I mean, I could even leave this as a pocket, but to be honest, I won't because this is very flimsy. So again, I'm going to just add, whoops, add some glue I really like to just have all my things very, you know, fixed down because then they're not going to get torn. If I leave things flapping, they're just likely to get, you know, torn off, to be honest. And then I can go in from underneath and glue down the rest of that all down here at the back. Okay, right. That is now glued. And I would just glue this little flap down here like that okay okay so what I'm going to do now is try and cut around the staircase oops I mean just the curve of the staircase not the individual stairs okay yep I can probably bin that I mean there's no need to hold that is there no 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 let's get rid of it right so that would look like that. Now, oh, maybe that's a bit weird now on there. Now, do I want to move this down to have it stuck on here or up? Let's just have a look. So if it was up, I'd have it chopped to there. So I would lose the top of the stairs, but I'd have more of the green showing. Or if I move it down, I'm going to lose a bit of the stairs. <clears throat> hmm, what do we think? Let's just see what that would look like. So that's how it would be with some of the stairs missing. And this is how it would be, obviously, with some of the top of the stairs missing. I mean, to be honest, I don't really think it makes that much difference. I think either would look fine, but I think I would prefer the a bottom missing so I'm just going to trim that down there okay and I can always trim this down further because I think it's still probably a bit on the long side okay so I love how that looks that's just super cool and yeah really really like that now let me just check how much more needs to come off okay so I just need to trim this down very slightly more like that okay so now I can just glue this all on the front of the cover so I mean obviously you know where I was worried about it having bubbled up a little bit with the heat tool that's all going to be you know going to be covered up anyway so you know n no worries there okie dokie okay and just take that and put that down right let's just try and pull this in oh my gosh oh, no I'm not not lined that up particularly well I have to say with the edges but never mind right so let's just go around that now with the wipe I might go around it with my card spreader as well I think like that okay oh I mean I love how that looks because you know that's not much of a difference but straight away it's just got an extra sort of element on there which you know that's fun isn't it to have some extra little pieces now just having a look we've got this piece that obviously I had torn out I don't think obviously we can have that on there now because of course it's you know it's monstrous on there 
but we might be able to have a couple of our glue book favorite pieces maybe somewhere that would just kind of help to tie this into the entire folio as well. Oh, I don't think I've used those ladybird, ladybirds anywhere yet. That's a bit of a shame. Right, I'm going to just put this butterfly down now. Again, I haven't really inked up pieces that I've put in the glue book. So I'm not inking this up as such. I'm just getting rid of the sort of sharp white edges that are still slightly visible. And I'm just going to have that I oh, quite like it up there actually but no let's have it down here like that okay and might just have room for just a black word somewhere okay should we have the word believe can you believe it he's hanging upside down from the staircase with a great big goose following him yep let's have that <laughs> we used to have this program here called um one fit in the grave it was a very funny program i have to say it would probably not be very funny nowadays but at the time it was very funny and there was a character in it called victor meldrew this old man who was quite grumpy and he's Key, uh, key catchphrase it was you know can you believe it or I don't don't believe it I think he used to say I don't believe it so um yeah I did just sprung into my head as I was picturing this and the word believe and thought oh, I don't believe it that man's hanging over the banisters held by a goose I don't know whether he is held by the goose actually but he looks a bit like he's held on by the goose so I just see if I've got any stamps or anything that maybe might look quite cute on there. Got that one. Don't know why, but yeah, these um, glue books, for some reason, everything seems to want to be straight on there, not crooked at all. I'm just going to pull in my other colour stamps to see whether I've got any... Uh, hmm. I'm going to say green. Is this my green pot? They look very blue, don't they? Bluey green. I think I said this before, but you don't seem to get that many green stamps, weirdly enough. And I guess all the ones I've ever had, I've used through time. Oh, I thought the green would look really nice on there, but to be honest, there's nothing else green on there, so maybe it doesn't look that clever anyway. So, uh... What about the orange? Because he's got the orange on his waistcoat, so we could have that just on there. Just kind of a bit of extra interest, isn't it? So, you know, because if I take that off, it looks a little bit boring. So let's put the stamp down as well. Okie dokie. Just put that like that. And we've got the little word. Just there. Now there is some yellow on here, so I'm just wondering whether we could have one of those daffodils or something from the glue books. The glue book favourites pieces. Oh, you know what? Probably would have preferred the daffodil here. I wonder if I can peel these bits off whether they're not quite glued yet. No, nope. luckily that glue does not dry very quickly these days. Yeah, they've changed the formula. It did used to dry much quicker, but... But hey, let's embrace it because actually sometimes that works out handy when it's taking a bit longer to dry. Now, I'm just having a look through to the side of me, just checking because I might prefer a smaller smaller daffodil so that I can still see these flowers so yeah I think I prefer that oh my gosh can I pop that in there yeah I think I prefer that just see if I've got any more of those small small daffodils oh, I don't think I have now are you okay sweetie yeah. I have got 
some shoes. Ugh, I mean, that's like a bit weird on there, but you know, the name of the game, I think, with these glue books is the weirder, you know, the weirder the better. Like, weird and wonderful things all over them. The only thing is tucked right behind there, you can't really even tell it's a shoe, to be honest. I mean, I quite like it, but is it even recognisable as being a shoe? Maybe not, to be honest. So, yeah, although I do like it, it's maybe pointless on there. Love you, darling. Um, I don't think the seagull's holding him. No, I think that's a goose, because this is Goosey Goosey Gander, I think. Goosey I don't Gander? Think it's I think. holding him. No, I don't think it is. My eyesight was obviously so bad, I couldn't tell whether it was or it wasn't. But how weird, huh? He's obviously just chased him over the over the stairs. I think that's how the rhyme goes, actually. Threw him down the stairs. I can't remember now. It was obviously on the facing page. I'll have to read it later. Is he stuck on the staircase? He's not stuck. He's falling down, I think. So, weird, huh? Very weird. Right. Again, just glue that word down. Oh, come on. I'm thinking I'm going to have to um, pull up that series, <laughs> One Fist in the Grave now, see if it's anywhere. It's probably somewhere, isn't it, online, you know, maybe Netflix or, well, probably not Netflix, but it might be somewhere, who knows, or maybe like the BBC or something, I think it was a BBC one. It would probably, as I say, seem a really awful now, but at the time it really was quite funny. Okay, so I love how that looks. Really, really fun. Now, I'm just going to trim my pages down and I'm probably better off doing them in batches of a few at a time. Obviously, they probably won't now be level, but I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. I just don't really want them overhanging from the front of the cover. So I'm just... Trim them down. Okay, oops. Oh my gosh, look. Look at the mess I've made of cutting those down. They look terrible, didn't they? Right, let's just trim them down. Okay, so I'm going to have this in here like that. So it's just a really titchy journal, but super, super cute. So I think now what we'll do is just have something like a little tuck spotty type piece on the cover. Now, what I'm going to do, I think, is use some fun twine to hold this in place. Um, I maybe might even be able to bind it. I know that there's that one whole binding method which I saw, you know, a long time ago on Emily from Emma Femra's Treasures. She had a wonderful tutorial of how to do the one binding, you know, binding method. Um, I would need to go back and check how she did that because I can't remember. I know that I did try and emulate it in, I think it was one of my 3 and 30, I think, um, videos. Uh, but I can't remember now how to how to do it so I'd have to recheck recheck how to do it yeah I'm thinking kind of like a little tuck spot or something would be quite good here let's just have another look so I've got lots of sort of journal any card pieces now I've mixed in because I printed off obviously you know two to a page and also full size pieces and now I've obviously mixed them all in so I've no longer got you know no longer got them in order of whether they were full size or two to a page. Well, these all seem to be two to a page, I think, so. Okay. Yeah, I mean, obviously, when I created these, I created them in mind with a much bigger folio or journal. So definitely for me, you know, this is a little bit of a struggle working with such tiny pieces. But, you know, hey, it's, it's all good. It's all fun. So let's just have a look now, see... See if we've got anything else that we might want to add to this page. Oh, too much goody, good looking stuff on that page. I don't want to cut into it. Mm, what have we got on here? She looks really horrible, doesn't she? Very, very evil, I think. 
don't know why, but yeah, for some reason I don't like the look of her. Uh, what have we got here? I've got these circles, or I have this, which is really nice. So we cut this shield type shape out. So let's just cut that round. Hmm, this doesn't look that easy to cut out. Because some sides are shaded and some aren't, if you know what I mean. They've got like shadows and some don't have. So I always find that throws you a bit when cutting when they have some parts shaded and some not. Okay. Okie dokie, right. Got that piece. So we could have that piece kind of up there or something. Uh, oh, I really want to use one of these ladybugs. So perhaps we could have the ladybug in here. That's kind of cute, isn't it? Okay, so I'm wondering whether this piece needs to just come down a slight bit. Maybe a bit more. Okay, so if we just have that on there, in fact, I'll probably have it as a pocket. I was going to have it as a tuck spot. The problem is with the tuck spots is sometimes then if they've got a pointy corner like this, i.e. they're just a rectangular piece or a square, I find that they then, when it folds, that often catches and gets crumpled. So I probably would prefer, you know, based on that, I would probably prefer to have it as a pocket, I think. So yeah, I think that's probably better. Okay, now, oh, I'm still determined to use some of that, some of that blue somewhere on here. Right, let's cut some more down. So let's cut this piece. Oh, this is going to be silly to cut. I don't know quite why I chose that piece. I thought it would be lovely, but maybe not. Oh my gosh, come on. Oh gosh, this is crazy, crazy, crazy. It's a bit like just cutting out somebody's signature. It's just awful. Yeah, clearly, <laughs> probably not the best idea, but... see oh this is just mm. oh, I can't decide right let me glue this down first because this one I'm you know, quite happy with. I like this one up here. So when you're using your kind of, um, you know, your books that you're cutting out from and things, well, all your printables, to be honest, don't be afraid to cut things out of the formation that they're in because you can always cut out the individual shapes. Um, you know, if something's got a butterfly on it or if something's got, you know, like this, a shield or something on it, you can always cut that out and use it individually. You don't have to use things as they were kind of originally, you know, produced, feel free to cut around them because that's when I think you can make the most interesting things sometimes is, um, you know, taking them out of their original format, if you see what I mean. So now wondering, uh, I wonder if we could have that there, I'm thinking. Maybe we could have just like some pears dangling from there. And perhaps we could have a postage stamp or something. So I'm just going to stick the ladybird down. Oh my gosh, he's got like those skinny little antenna things. Right, so put him there. Press him down. Okay, let's get my dry wipe again. Now we could maybe have 
a red stamp only because the red would then tie in from the ladybird. Oh, that's quite nice, isn't it? Right, let's have the red stamp there. Like that. I'm going to put this down here. Okay, across there like that. And then I'm just going to put those pairs down. So they look kind of really cute just on there, don't they? Okay, so we just pop them like that. Oh, super cute, super cute, right. Now, I haven't got the foggiest idea what time we started this video because I stopped it several times while we were drying the gesso. So I'm pretty sure I must be coming up to quite a bit of, you know, quite a long time. So I think perhaps we'll have to call it quits there for today. Just going to glue this one down. Like that. Okay, and we just make a little pocket here from that, like that. Okay, so yeah, I will probably go off and find out again how to do that one whole book binding method um, to be able to bind this journal. Um, but yeah, I hope this has given you some ideas of how to use up some of your book pages and things. I mean, they make a super cute journal and... Um, you know, really just a nice way to use some of them up, I think. And, you know, it comes together in no time. The longest part is obviously, you know, waiting for the gesso to dry. Um, but what a cute little journal that is to just tuck into our little ephemera folder. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you've got some ideas and inspiration from this video. And hopefully you'll join me again soon. Thanks then. Bye.